Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining again today. We've got another diorama video for you. Well ladies and gentlemen, this is a pretty special video for me. This is one of the largest, I think this is actually the largest diorama that I've ever made. Um, and I am just super excited to call it finished. I was working on it for about two weeks from the start and I uh, am just, I'm chuffed with how it turned out. So let's go ahead and pick it up and show it off. This is my Predator Jungle Hunter diorama. Uh, it is an MDF wood box, a 3D printed sculpture. The sculpture was modeled by Prey Collection Studio. I purchased the model and 3D printed it in multiple different parts myself, and then constructed the diorama box, poured the water epoxy and, you know, all of the bits and bobs that you see here so I am very very excited to call it done and now without further ado you get to watch me build it well before I even get into it I just want to say that this video is going to be a bit longer than I normally go for time lapses because it was such an involved project and I really want to show off as much of the process as possible without turning it into a full-length thing so thank you to those of you who stick around for the entirety of the build we're starting off with the pieces of the model already printed. Normally I enjoy showing the printing and sometimes even the sculpting and slicing process as well, but this happened to be a pre-supported, pre-sculpted, pre-purchased model from one of my favorite digital sculptors on Instagram, and I'm just giving his work, Prey Collection Studio, a run for his own piece's money by making it into a full diorama scene rather than just a single model by itself. I've gone ahead and primed the tree parts as well as the human body part, and now the wrist blades. Now we'll be assembling all of the pieces for the first time. Next up, we'll be giving the wrist blades a coat of silver. Now, dark brown on the tree parts. After that, base red on the human body part. Next, we'll be running some super thin 30 gauge copper wire through the hollow interiors of the predator parts so that we can wire up two yellow LEDs inside of the mask. Now, we'll be placing the two yellow 3mm LEDs inside of the mask through the back of the head and setting them in place with a dab of super glue each. Time to wire these babies up and solder the connections.
gosh, this is unintentionally loud. Normally I film all of my painting stuff just outside of my studio, but this portion of the video was filmed underneath my carport because it happened to be monsooning this day, like the jungle outside, which is a fairly rare thing for me where I currently live on the edge of the desert. I felt that the dark brown I used was too dark, so I went over it with a lighter brown. I also felt that the base red was too bright on the human body part, so I went over that with a slightly darker red. Now that everything is soldered into place, we'll be putting one of the last pieces of the Predator together, which is the Predlocks on the back of the head. After that, we'll be putting the shoulder-mounted plasma cannon on, followed by the wrist blades. I didn't actually show it, but I dipped the wrist blades in liquid chrome so they are extra, extra shiny by comparison to the original silver coat. Now it's time to move on to the body. We're going to be using a pink flesh tone for the tendon and ligament definition. This next portion of the video will be without any narration, so sit back and enjoy the view. Now it's time for the blood. Now normally I would not recommend this for a long-term permanent application, but I am actually using stage blood on a chip brush to completely saturate the body. Now this stuff, again, is not made for a permanent application. However, if you let it bake in the sun for a bit, it hardens up and will accept UV resistant crystal clear varnish spray, which seals the blood in a permanent encapsulation of gloss. This process worked out magnificently for me in this case. However, success using this method is a case-by-case -case basis. Moving back to the tree now. We'll be using a very dark brown to break up some of that color. Next, we'll be using a flesh tone for the most dead parts of the tree trunk. After that, we'll be using a lily pad green to paint the areas where we'll be adding moss to the tree later on.
And now we're setting the predator into the tree trunk. It's time to add some foliage. We'll be starting with fake moss. Next up, we'll be hiding the wiring and then soldering a battery holder in place on the back side of the tree trunk, which won't be showing in the diorama scene. And of course, it only makes sense to paint the battery holder, making it even less obvious. It's finally time to assemble the diorama box. We'll be using some MDF panels that I had laying around. Moving on to painting the diorama box, I'm priming it with a camouflage green. And now I'm going to be painting the base with a flat black. It's time to make some terrain. We'll be using some extra pieces of L200 foam that were laying around the studio. First, we'll have to cut the desired shape, then we'll have to glue the layers together, and finally, we'll have to use the Dremel tool to do the final terrain shaping for the shore. I'm mixing a slurry of two-part epoxy, which will be spread using a spatula onto the foam terrain, both sealing it and giving it some texture. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the PuTTY application. Time to prime the terrain. After priming the terrain, I went in with a mixture of browns to completely coat the shore with a chip brush as well as parts of the base which will be covered with clear epoxy later on. Next, I'm using lily pad green again, this time to break up some of the background color in the diorama box. Now I'm using a flat black to dab over the brown to break up the color of the terrain. And it's finally time to glue down the model to the base of the diorama box. We're gonna go ahead and place some real sticks from my property in the diorama box to be used as large scale deadfall. Now it's time to mix up and pour the clear epoxy, which will be the water in the diorama scene. It was a fairly lengthy process getting the translucency of the dye, the color that I wanted to use just right, so I skipped over that part and the brown dye is already mixed into the epoxy. We'll also be mixing up just a dab of ruby red translucent epoxy dye with some of the epoxy to use as blood dripping later on. Now, for the sake of speeding up time, as this is already a long enough video, I skipped the portion of the video where I added a lip of wood to the front of the diorama box to prevent the epoxy from leaking while it cures overnight. Let's pour some epoxy magic, ladies and gents.
using a spatula here to spread the epoxy along the shore of the terrain. And now we'll be using that blood mixture that we mixed up previously to dribble under the feet of the body that the predator is holding. Next, onto one of my favorite parts of this entire build, we'll be using a translucent medium gel to add ripples and chop to the top of the water's surface. We're going to add two large circular ripples around the model as if the predator has just landed from a very large jump and the concussion of his landing has created ripples around the dead tree on the surface of the water. I like adding extra attention to detail to help tell a story in pieces like these. Man would you look at that water texture, fantastic. Finally, the second to last step in the process of building this sweet diorama is adding the foliage to the rest of the diorama box. We'll be using a variety of different types to really help sell the diorama scene. They are full-sized 1-1 scale plants which were cut down and modified to be more in line with the 1 tenth scale of this diorama scene. This will be the longest portion of the video without any narration, so again, sit back and enjoy the view.
Originally, I was going to leave the water as you see it, but I decided it would be fun last minute to add some single leaves to the surface of the water, so that's what we're doing here. Each leaf is individually glued in place on the surface of the water. Of course, we can't call this diorama done until the edges have been painted. For this, I am using a gunmetal paint. It's finally time to call this bad boy done. Let's take a look at it on the spinny. I screwed up and completely forgot to film the last part, which consisted of spraying scenic cement onto the terrain and then scattering dirt and gravel from my property to really seal the terrain's final look. This project was truly a labor of love, and with Prey having recently released and my absolutely loving it, I've been on a bit of a predator kick, and I really wanted to print this piece and make it into a full diorama. So I am very glad that I did because it turned out far better than I possibly could have imagined when I thought the idea up to begin with. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know I am doing a good job by giving it a thumbs up and commenting. And if you wish to support me further as a creator, please subscribe and tap that bell to all notifications so that you never miss any future content from my channel. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.